I'm here at the Intel booth at CES 2024, checking out all that Intel Core Ultra has to offer. Now, Intel Core Ultra adds a layer of AI functionality by boosting productivity, helping creators handle those menial, repetitive, and even creative tasks in order to become more efficient and produce better work. If you don't care about your career and you're willing to let AI take all your creative assets, then you'll most likely stop watching this video now. I'm out. But if you do, you're gonna hang on till the end of this video because we have so much to cover that is advantageous to you moving into the future. Intel Core Ultra pulls AI out of the cloud and personalizes it to your PC experience. I understand completely the anxiety of sending your creation off to the cloud and it goes into some model and it's training something like, I understand the fear. And the, the benefit of doing this locally is that the chain of custody over your creation is yours because you're not training a model somewhere in the cloud on your stuff. It's on your PC, the model's already trained, it's simply been deployed to your computer for your use. So every step of that process from creation to completion remains on your device, it's yours, you have the chain of custody. So it's both private and secure. Now Intel is saying this is going to be a game changer for creators, but how? Since the AI frenzy began what feels like only a few months ago, there have been tons of conversations around the idea that AI perhaps might steal jobs and creative work from creatives, but in fact, these are going to be mere tools in the hands of inspired creators that learn how to take advantage of them. That's right, so with Stable Diffusion and with some of these like text to image generation, coming up with a, a really good prompt is a science in itself. That kind of becomes your IP. Maybe you've got a specific aesthetic and you figured out a prompt that can help you generate that aesthetic. You're not risking uh, exposing that prompt to anybody else. It all stays local on the system. They're not connected. You don't have to be connected to the internet at all. I love that because it, it removes that kind of fear of using AI for creators, right? I mean, it's something we, we hold closely is our creative domain. Power of AI on your own personal device means that you get to take advantage of the public AI while training your own personal AI on everything it needs to know to assist you in your creative process. Now, if it weren't for Intel sponsoring this video, I would not have been able to go to CES and learn all that I can to help you as creators see if AI is the right fit for your creative workflow moving into your future as a creative professional. There are already a number of laptops available on the market right now with the latest Intel Core Ultra, like the brand new HP Omen Transcend 14, the MSI Prestige 16 AI, and more coming like the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G16 or the Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i. As they become available, they'll be linked up in the description below so you can check out the pricing and spec outs for yourself. Now, I spoke with Robert from Intel's performance team about empowering creators with their own personal AI. How is that going to be able to help us be more efficient as we move forward, for instance, in video editing or Photoshop? So let's talk through a little bit about that. Sure. I, I think at the basic level, um, the performance metric for AI is actually human time. Right? Most other benchmarking is frames per second, time to complete, but here we're talking about augmenting creativity. Right? So if you do scene edits, noise removal, color tone, rotoscoping, like these are very time intensive, laborious tasks to do frame by frame manually, and AI can get you, you know, 70, 80, 90% of the way there. It is not a wholesale replacement. It's not designed to be, it's not going to, but it can save you the hours and you're just tweaking at the end instead of doing all of it. Now this new generation of Intel Core Ultra processors is not about bringing more performance to your device. I believe we reached that about two years ago for the average designer, video editor, photographer who has needs for maybe 4K video editing or raw photo processing or producing digital art. Intel Core Ultra is about equipping you, the creator, with better tools for your creative process. Imagine running your own creative agency with dozens of AI employees ready to take your own style, technique, and workflow to the next level so you can increase your creativity and productivity on the day-to-day. -day. This type of workforce was only available in the physical world up until this point, and it required hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in order to have a team of that size. But now you have your own AI workforce ready to deploy in your creative process. For artists, you will no longer have to painstakingly create a hundred variations of a character, perhaps in new body positions, holding a different weapon, or maybe even in a different environment. You can train and empower your AI workforce to do these things for you. And remember with Intel Core Ultra, this is all done in your personal system. So you're training your own personal AI algorithm or you know AI workforce to know and understand how your creative process works. And then nobody else can access that specific trained algorithm. So you keep that safe and protected on your own system. So you can protect your intellectual and physical property rights on your own device. So if all of this AI is possible and we can expect more and more applications in the future, 
well, what's available right now? Well, that's where I got a chance to catch up with Garth from Intel's AI engineering team, and he showed me a number of tools that him and his team has developed that you can utilize right now. They're open source, free tools that if you have Intel Core Ultra Processor equipped in your laptop, you can take advantage of them. So I'm here with Garth at the Intel booth. He is an AI software engineer, and he's developing creator tools inside of GIMP and Audacity, things that are making the creative process easier and we're just gonna dive into it. So first and foremost, let's talk about what's happening inside of GIMP and, and the value of this free open source software for people. GIMP is of course a free and open source image editor and one of the things that we've done is put a bunch of AI tools into GIMP and it's really designed to really make your AI workflow or your image editing workflow easier. Whether you're doing image generation and then modifying that image afterwards, or you're using AI tools to repair images, maybe remove things from the background, um, being able to do that all within your workflow, if you're if you're using GIMP, is really advantageous. Um, and so it's really trying to, yeah, just show the power of OpenVINO, show the power of the Core Ultra, but also show that you know we've got these open source uh, things that work on both Linux and Windows, by the way, that take advantage of all of the the AI capability in the Intel Core Ultra. A lot of times, I I feel like tools are behind paywalls, and Intel here is showing that they want to invest into the creative community by providing these free open source tools. So for instance, one thing would be type to image, right? You can you can type something out and generate an image. A lot of times these are behind paywalls, but now, because you guys have created open source tools that are embedded into GIMP, anybody can have access to it. That's right, it's, it's, it's completely free. You know, we're using open source models, we're not doing any of the model training ourselves, we're just taking advantage of models that people have already published to do these things, and we're, we're kind of connecting that to the workflow. So you're taking all of that complexity, maybe you're generating images online, maybe you're doing it you know, through some kind of web user interface. So instead of having to do that and then convert that into something that you're gonna load into GIMP or load into your image editor, we're just adding it directly in and making that workflow easier, making it free to, and available to everybody, but also uh, you know, showing it as a demonstration of how to do it. Maybe you're a developer and you wanna see how we did this. The code is all there, everyone can take advantage of it and feel free to use it in any of their, their own projects. You're doing all of this on your system. The MPU is doing this. You're not sending it up to the cloud. So any creativity that takes place, you get to keep domain up. Now looking at Audacity, you can now separate tracks. You can take a complete music file that, that has drums and a guitar and vocals, and it will separate all of those. So talk us through that. If you wanted to get an individual track for say just the drums or just the bass um, or just the vocals for any song, you would have to either spend a lot of money to go get it or you would use some program that probably gives you a substandard output. As you can see, we've got the, the track loaded into Audacity and I'll just play a little bit of it so you can see how it sounds like. With all your dreams and all your fears, will I ever see? But now using AI, we can get a really clean separation between all of these different instruments. And you can do your own remixes. You can you know, take parts from one song, put it in another. You can do your own karaoke night. Um, we've got a lot of AI tools actually built into Audacity that make it yeah, just a ton of fun to use. And one thing you were saying is this, the clarity between tracks is amazing. I mean, there's no, you called it ghosting? Right, there's no ghosting. So you don't actually, when you're listening to the vocal track, here, let me just uh, do a little solo on the vocal track here. I watched you slowly disappear with all your dreams and... That's amazing. You can see how clear that is. Like, if you were to do that just using, like, frequency analysis, you would, be, you would get maybe some drums in the background. A lot of times the cymbals bleed into uh, the vocal track, and so you would hear those artifacts. Now that we know what Intel Core Ultra can provide us via creativity and productivity, let's take a look under the hood of Intel's latest CPU. Intel has ditched its previous design for a brand new Intel 4. This is their first module design that lays four tiles onto the chipset. You have a CPU, GPU, SOC, and I.O. As we move into future generations, they can simply swap out different tiles in order to improve performance. They don't have to ditch the entire design and start from scratch or get stuck in something like 14 nanometer plus, 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 like we've seen in years past. They've created a much more flexible chipset. The most newsworthy tile provides a new type of e-core embedded directly onto the I.O. Now these new LP e-cores are responsible for all of the low power tasks while you're using your computer. So say you're streaming video playback on YouTube or Disney Plus or the like, instead of using the P or e-cores like times past, you are now accessing the LP e-cores, which are far more efficient. 
Intel is saying we can see anywhere from 25 to 35% more efficiency, which improves battery life by using these new LPE cores. And with the AI capabilities in Intel Core Ultra, your computer automatically selects between these different cores in order to get the best efficiency possible. Now, all of this chatter about the new NPU, the Neural Processing Unit, that is found on the SoC and is responsible for all the AI tools and workflows that you can take advantage of if you have an Intel Core Ultra equipped laptop. Now, I've already had a chance to get a sneak peek at the latest MSI Prestige 16 AI, and this laptop comes equipped with the Intel Core 9 185H and the RTX 4070, and it is on par with the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra i9 13900H and RTX 4070, and beats the Dell XPS 15 with the i7 13700H. But like I was saying earlier, we're going to have 30% more power efficiency. So therefore, the battery life that we saw in last year's Book 3 got around nine hours and. 37 minutes of battery life. With that 30% increase in efficiency, we're going to see around 11 hours and 49 minutes of battery life out of a machine with the same performance. So again, remember, this generation is all about improving productivity and efficiency while maintaining the great performance we found in last generation. If you feel like we're on a bit of a cliffhanger here with Intel Core Ultra due to the lack of benchmarks, I completely agree. I'll be getting full review units here in the studio, so don't miss out on that content coming your way soon.